Bet365 sponsors the 59th Minute FPL podcast and they stream over 150,000 live sporting events every year, connecting you to every game that matters. Bet365 offers a wide range of markets, including first, last or anytime goal scorers. Download the app and see for yourself why it's the world's favourite online betting company. And with the Bet365 Bet Builder, you can create personalised bets and calculate the odds for any football match right there in your hands. Their app lets you watch thousands of games live, but if you can't watch it for any reason, you can stay in touch with instant match updates. Bet365 is the world's favourite online sport betting company. The app can be downloaded from Google Play and Apple App Store. Over 18s only, please gamble responsibly. The Athletic. Hi folks, welcome to another episode of the 59th Minute FPL podcast, which is brought to you by The Athletic. I'm Mark McGettigan, you can find me on Twitter at FPL General. I'm recording on Tuesday ahead of Double Gaming 35. It's another Friday deadline this week, 6.30pm UK time, which is 90 minutes before Leicester Newcastle kicks off. Before that, there's Champions League and Europa League action for Chelsea, Man City, Man United and Arsenal this midweek. The headlines from Game Week 34. The main headline was the Manchester United Liverpool game being called off due to the fans storming the Old Trafford pitch. This had big implications for FPL, with many managers having five or six players from that fixture. We don't know yet when it will be rescheduled for, but it could result in a double Game Week 35 for both teams, plus a fixture in blank Game Week 36 for both teams. So for those of us who have no chips or wildcard left, it could actually help us out over these next couple of game weeks. We should get confirmation at some point this week of when that game is going to happen. On the pitch, Gareth Bale scored a hat-trick against Sheffield United, while popular captain pick Harry Kane blanked. Son racked up a 12-pointer in that game as well. Mikel Antonio returned from injury to score a brace in West Ham's 2-1 win at Burnley. Chris Wood was also on the score sheet in that game to make it seven goals in seven appearances. Southampton played most of their game against Leicester with 10 men, but fought hard for a 1-1 draw. Ward Prowse and Johnny Evans the goal scorers, Ian Acho getting himself an assist. The Manchester City second string beat Crystal Palace 2-0. Sergio Aguero and Ferran Torres with the goals in that one. Kai Havertz returned to the Chelsea start in 11 and bagged himself two goals against Fulham. And finally, Ollie Watkins got his 13th goal of the season, while Calvert Lewin got his 15th of the season in the Everton Aston Villa game, which Villa won 2 1. You can subscribe to The Athletic right now for a special price of £3.99 a month for six months. That's 40% off the full price of a subscription. You'll enjoy great analysis and in-depth features from the very best football writers around, as well as ad-free versions of all our podcasts. Simply visit theathletic.com forward slash FPL pod to take advantage of this special 40% discount. That's theathletic.com forward slash FPL pod. A few shout outs from Gaming 34. We have one new member of the club. Welcome. Jairo Reidewald of Crystal Palace. He had a 58th minute appearance a couple of weeks ago. So he has been dicing with death and he finally joins the club that nobody wants to be in. Couple of notable mentions. Have to give Patrick Bamford a shout out here. Who is already a member of the club from earlier in the season. He was very close to getting another shout out. 58 minutes against Brighton. So time for him to go for us who own him I think. Vidra at Burnley was very, very lucky, just about made it to 60 minutes. David Louise at Arsenal unfortunately picked up another injury on 52 minutes, which resulted in him missing out on the clean sheet points in that game. And finally, Fofana at Leicester and Alioski at Leeds both managed just 45 minutes. A very brief review of my game week this week. This might actually have been possibly my worst ever season. Uh, not my worst ever season, my worst ever game week since I started playing FPL. First of all, my transfer was, I got rid of Artie, went straight back to Harry Kane, gave Harry Kane the captaincy, so made one free transfer, didn't take any hits, thankfully, because I think it would have been a lot worse if I did. 
ended up on a massive 20 points. What a disaster. I was away for the weekend. First time myself, my wife and the dog have been able to go away for a hotel break since all this COVID stuff happened. So we picked a very good weekend to go away. So I didn't have to sit through the pain of these games over the weekend. The social media boycott also came at the right time for me. Um, So 20 points, absolute disaster. 27k dropped to 45k. So I'm now 54 points outside the top 10k, which now looks like it's not going to be achievable with just four game weeks to go. And more importantly, I'm I'm only four points inside the top 50k. So I think my priorities have to change now. I've probably got to forget about the top 10k and just make sure that I stay inside the top 50k. The way things have been going, I need to stop the slide. Um, I'm not even going to do a good and a bad this week. I'm just going to mention the good because it was only two players. Mendy got me seven points. God bless him because otherwise it would have been even more of a disaster. And Ian Acho got the assist. And that was it. No points elsewhere. I only fielded six players. And one of those six was Marcus Alonso who came off the bench for about 10 minutes. So I think over the... You know, since I wildcard, I think a wildcard gave me 30 and those couple of gave me before wildcarding as well. I think when I sit down at the end of this season and reflect on what went wrong, you know, I was in a very good position. I think I was ranked about 2K and now I'm sitting at 45K. I think there will be a lot to learn from my decisions uh, and I think there'll be a lot to take away from that to bring into next season. You know, just simple things. You know, that gave me 30 wildcard. I sold lots of good assets that I've had most of the season. Players like Kufal and Ollie Watkins come to mind. And you know, I, I moved away from Manchester City for rotation reasons, which has been which has been great. But I walked straight into another problem by buying three players managed by Thomas Tuchel. So I think that's what really hurt me this week, having the three Chelsea players. You know, Azpilicueta and Alonso didn't start. Then I had a, a weak bench this week as well with the likes of Smith Rowe and Rafinha, who's injured. Um, so, yeah, I think there will be a lot for me to learn from these last, let's say, 10 game weeks where things have really, you know, um, not gone well. I was going to throw in a swear word there, but I don't usually swear. This is probably the closest you'll ever get this week to getting a swear word out of me on the podcast. Basically, things have not gone well. And I'm looking forward to sitting down after game week 38 Going through it with a fine tooth comb, particularly since that game week 30 wild card, and you know, find out exactly what's gone wrong, learn from it, and then bring it into next season. I've updated my watch list today ahead of the final four game weeks of the season. I've removed three players who are holding, who didn't feature at the weekend, Fofana, who only managed 45 minutes, and Jared Bowen, who didn't start for West Ham. So that is those three guys off my radar. I've added quite a few players this week. Defenders, first of all, Castagna at Leicester. So I've removed Fofana and I've added Castagna. I think he is the best Leicester defender to go for now. Plenty of attack and potential there, as we've seen with his goal recently. Leicester have the double game week this week as well. Harry Maguire I've added. Manchester United have the double game week. It now looks like if the fixtures fall the way we expect them to, that they won't have a blank in 36. So I like Maguire. I've got Shaw and I've got Bruno. And I think if I'm going to add a third Manchester United player, Harry Maguire is leading the race at the moment because one of my biggest problems in recent weeks is buying too many players that are not guaranteed to start. So I'm going to focus, you know, any player I bring in over the next two or three game weeks, they're going to be players who I know are going to play. And I think Harry Maguire ticks that box. Regulon at Spurs, been really impressed by him this season. Um, should have been on the score sheet at the weekend. Harry Kane teed him up and he put it wide. Obviously got the clean sheet points in that one. Aurier was the defender for Spurs who came away with, with a lot of points in that. I think he got two assists. But if I was going to buy a Spurs defender for these final four matches, I think I would go Regulon. He's just he's an absolute flyer up that left wing. Yeah, really, you know, lots of attack and potential there as well. So I like Regulon. Obviously, he doesn't have a double game week which is going to probably put a lot of people off. But he could easily score well over these next couple of game weeks. Midfielders added to the watch list this week. An obvious one, Gareth Bale. You know, I probably removed him last week or the week before. Goes out, starts and gets a hat-trick against Sheffield United. I don't think we can ignore that. I'll come back to Gareth Bale because there's a question on him later. I've also added Ward Prowse, who has a double game week this week. He's on penalties while Danny Ings is injured. 
that word price is he's always been a bit of a boring FPL pick, but he's got the set pieces, he's got the penalties, he's got the double game week. So I wouldn't stop anybody from buying him this week. I'm probably looking at a couple of left field picks now as well, you know, possibly for the final few weeks now that I'm 45k. I don't think I'm going to get to 10k, so I'm probably just going to play out the season and I don't really care what happens to my rank between now and game week 38. So players like El Ghazi at Aston Villa will come onto my radar. I think he's got 90 minutes in the last two games. As far as I know, he's on penalties as well. Scored a great goal against Everton. So, you know, I'd like to think he stays in the team now after that goal. So he's an option. I think he's only about 5.2 million. And up front, I've added four strikers to my watch list. I've got players I currently own up front are Harry Kane, Ianacho and Patrick Bamford. Kane and Ianacho will probably stay, uh, but Bamford is 100% leaving my squad this week because I've had enough, especially after that sub 60 minute appearance again. So, a couple of players. Danny Welbeck comes onto the watch list for the first time this season. Been really impressed with him since he joined Brighton. Really, really good goal that he scored at the weekend, so his confidence is high. Brighton are in a much better position now as well, so they can play with a little bit more freedom. So I like Welbeck. I think he's only 5.5 million. Calvert-Lewin, who I sold weeks ago, comes back into my thoughts. Everton have the double. They also have a game in 36. So I think Everton players will be very popular transfers in this week and next week. And Calvert-Lewin is in my thoughts as a potential Bamford replacement, but cash is an issue because I don't have any in the bank. Sergio Aguero, what a goal he scored at the weekend. What a first touch, what a finish. Could end up getting a lot of game time between now and the end of the season in the league. Uh, He's probably not going to start in the Champions League, so we could see him start possibly all of the remaining Premier League games, especially that the league is basically wrapped up now and it's you know Aguero's leaving in the summer it looks like as well so people like myself whose season basically game week 34 was the final nail in the coffin for me in terms of probably not going to be able to achieve my my goal so players like Aguero come into my thoughts now just as a fun you know last time we'll ever own the guy we've had so many good times with him over the last you know eight nine seasons or whatever it is uh, so he does come into the thinking and, and he's even a fun captaincy pick in certain game weeks between now and game week 38 as well so I don't think I'll do it but he will be in my thoughts over the next couple of game weeks when it comes to transfers and finally Mikel Antonio who is I think going to be back in a lot of people's thoughts this week came back from injury looked really sharp got himself two goals could have had more uh, David Moyes said he's he's come back really fresh and really fit, so that's good. West Ham still have good fixtures for the next four game weeks as well, so we probably will fall into the trap of buying double game week players this week, but I haven't ruled out buying Antonio, even though he's only got one fixture, because West Ham, I do like the look of those West Ham fixtures for the last four game weeks. They're going for Champions League. They still look good to me. You know, I watched most of that game on Monday night against Burnley. Plenty of chances. Antonio looked really good. Plenty of creative players in that team to create chances for him. So I'm back in Antonio to score well for the remainder of the season. So that's the watch list updated ahead of Double Gaming 35. Getting into the Twitter questions now. The first one this week comes in from Alex Ball. With Leno and Mendy rotation risks and blanking in Gaming 36 and Forster also confirmed to miss Gaming 36, with two free transfers, would you consider moving to a goalkeeper that doubles and doesn't blank? Alex is considering Henderson at Manchester United and Guetta at Crystal Palace. So yeah, Leno and Mendy are problems. I think Leno's a bigger problem, given that Ryan got another start at the weekend. Mendy, I've got him. I'm still hopeful that he'll start every Premier League game between now and the end of the season, but that game week 36 blank is a problem. And I might myself sell Mendy in game week 36 for a goalkeeper who plays. Alex mentions Fraser Forster here. I think there's been comments in the last day or two from Hasenhutl that Forster is going to come back in now for the next game or two. But then it looks like that McCarthy will actually play in game week 36, which is annoying because those of us who have Mendy Forster were hoping that Forster would play that 36 fixture. But as it stands, it looks like he's not and it looks like it'll be McCarthy in goal for that one. So again, we can't we can't know for sure, uh, and we and we probably won't know going into that game week thirty six fixture. So we probably have a decision to make: do we go into that game week without a goalkeeper, or do we use the free transfer to get one? Uh, and I probably will 
you know, go and get a goalkeeper that week with the free transfer. So looking at the options, there's not that many to choose from because of those rotation risks and because of the players who don't have a fixture in game week 36. Alex mentions Henderson at Manchester United, who to me is still a bit of a rotation risk as well when you've got a very good goalkeeper in David De Gea breathing down his neck. So I don't love that pick. I probably prefer Guaita quite simply because you know he'll play. He's got a decent double game week in terms of fixtures as well. So I don't mind the Guaita pick. Looking at the other options, I still like Martinez, even though the fixtures are not amazing. You know, good double game week this week, got a fixture in 36. And then there's Jordan Pickford, who again, you could argue is a slight rotation risk because we've seen Ancelotti move his goalkeepers around a little bit this season as well. But I would have thought Pickford... I think he's been playing pretty well recently. Uh, made a lot of good saves at the weekend. Uh, yes, he was on the losing team, but I would like to think Pickford does start every game between now and the end of the season. So I think Pickford's probably as good as anyone looking at the fixtures. Got the double game week, got the fixture in 36, and Everton do have pretty good fixtures between now and game week 38. So I would probably be leaning towards Pickford at the moment, but I don't have huge faith in any of the options. now, And I haven't ruled out... Just going without a goalkeeper in 36 and then hoping that Mendy plays 37 and 38. So, yeah, I think goalkeepers has been, I think goalkeepers is trickier at the moment than it's ever been in my time playing FPL. So, it is, it's a headache that we really didn't need. But, yeah, I do like the idea of moving away from the rotation risk keepers, getting someone who plays 35, uh, doubles in 35 and plays in 36. Although, I'm going to hold Mendy for the double this week. And then if I'm going to make a goalkeeper switch, it'll be in game week 36 rather than this week. Question from Mark. What to do with Jota? Mark was set to ditch him in favour of Ward Price for the upcoming double game week. However, according to Ben Crelin, it's possible that Liverpool will have a double game week 35 and still play in 36 when the Man, when the Man United game is rescheduled. What are your thoughts on Jota? So yeah, what, what it looks like what is most likely to happen is that Liverpool, Manchester United will play in 36, which will result in Liverpool's game week 36 fixture moving back to 35, giving them a double, which I think is going to be Southampton and West Brom. So a really attractive double game week for Liverpool if that does happen. Then they've got the fixture most likely against Manchester United in game week 36. Again, nothing is confirmed here, but we should get that in the next couple of days. And that's the most likely thing that will happen, according to Ben Crellin, who is the expert on fixture prediction so Jota I think becomes an easy keep if Liverpool have a double game week this week you're not going to sell him even if he was only to start one of the two and get 20 minutes in the other one he's a really good option Uh, and then he'd have you know a fixture in game week 36 as well so I think if you've got Jota at the moment you keep him see what happens with that fixture news and if they do have a double game week then I think we keep him for one more week depending on what he does in those two games then he's a possible sell in game week 36. But for the moment, I think we keep Diogo Jota. Question from Trond Garman. What's the best way to make use of a wild card this week now that Liverpool most likely will get a double and Manchester United won't blank? Who are the best three players from Liverpool and Manchester United? So yeah, I think if you're on a wild card this week, you probably do triple up on Liverpool and Manchester United players now once that fixture schedule is confirmed later in the week so the thing I like about the triple ups is Liverpool and Manchester United obviously not ideal having six players uh, in, in game week 36 if they play each other much like what was supposed to happen this week but both teams do have good fixtures in game week 37 and game week 38 so I wouldn't worry too much about when they play each other and just look at the fixture around that and I think the triple ups are justified Again, I would probably focus on players who are going to play or who you know who have the best chance of playing 90 minutes in every game between now and the end of the season. So for me, that's Trent, Salah, and I think my third Liverpool player would probably be Robertson at the moment, go after those clean sheets. And again, he's just likely to play most of the games, whereas Jota probably isn't. So I would probably favour Robertson over Jota on a wildcard this week even though I'm happy to keep Jota for the double game week. Manchester United, Shaw, probably the first name. Bruno, second name. Very impressive performance from Bruno Fernandes in the Europa League, so hopefully he can carry that into the league over the next couple of games. And again, much like Robertson, 
I think my third Manchester United pick will be Harry Maguire because he will play every game uh, for the next couple of game weeks. You've got you know tempting options like Cavani and Greenwood, but they're never 100% sure starters. So I think I would be going down the boring route of Robertson and Maguire as my third picks from those two teams. And I definitely would be tripling up on both for a wild card this week. Question from Tony. Is it time to get Antonio back in? As a Kane, would Iheanacho owner who makes way, the fixtures suggest I let the Leicester man go. So this week, if I was going into it with Kane, Wood and Iheanacho, obviously Iheanacho stays for one more week because he's got a double. Chris Wood, I wouldn't sell him because, you know, what more do you want? You've got seven goals in his last seven games. You've got a very good asset who a lot of people are not buying because they're focusing on double game week players. So he's a differential for you. And Harry Kane, yes, very disappointing. He got nothing in a 4-0 victory. But I see no reason to sell Kane at the moment. Tottenham have four pretty favourable fixtures, winnable fixtures, between now and the end of the season. Leicester, final day of the season, probably the trickiest. But, you know, wouldn't surprise me to see them get a result in that one. So if I had Kane, Wood and Ian Acho, what I would do to get Antonio back is do nothing this week with your strikers. And... I would probably go Iheanacho to Antonio game week 36. So get the double game week out of Iheanacho and then get Antonio back game week 36 when Leicester have a blank fixture. Leicester have the blank and then they face Chelsea and Tottenham. So it's a pretty tricky end of the season for the Foxes. Question from FPL Eldon. What to do with Harry Kane? For those of us who own Kane and Son, is it time to replace Kane with a striker who has a double game week? And good fixtures afterwards, for example, Calvert Lewin. Is Sun enough for our Spurs contingent going forward? So I'm very much in the camp of there's no reason to sell Kane. I think a lot of people will sell him this week after a blank and with the temptation of getting a player who's got two fixtures this week. For example, Calvert Lewin, Ollie Watkins, there's quite a few. But just when I look at the fixtures for Harry Kane, Leeds, Wolves, Aston Villa, Leicester. So I would view Leeds, Wolves, Aston Villa as very, very good fixtures for Harry Kane. The Leicester one is probably a little bit tricky. Uh, but again, I don't see any reason to sell Kane. I think he's a very good captaincy option in game week 36 and 37 against Wolves and Aston Villa. So for me, Harry Kane, very likely to stay in my team for the rest of the season. So I'll be looking to set up this week after my transfers. I'm hoping to have 10 double game week players plus Harry Kane as my single game week player if that Liverpool double game week is confirmed. Next question is from Luke Street. Another Spurs related question. Is Gareth Bale a trap? I feel like I've fallen for it too many times this season already. I think a lot of people are in the same boat to have bought Gareth Bale a couple of times and it hasn't worked out. I think I managed to buy him just once and it didn't work out and I've been very reluctant to go back there. But it's very hard to ignore a hat-trick from any player. Uh, Spurs have the fixtures. I expect Bale to start. You know, I would have thought he'll start all the remaining league matches now. So I wouldn't call him a trap. I think he's a pretty good option now for the rest of the season. I'd still be inclined to go back and get Son first over Bale, despite the hat trick. But I think I think all three, Kane, Son, and Bale, are are very good options for the rest of the season. So no, I'm going to say Bale is not a trap. I think if you buy him. You should be expecting him to start games and you should be expecting him to get you FPL points. So hopefully he doesn't turn out to be a trap this time. Question from FPL Invincible. That's certainly not me at the moment. Who is the best defender to consider until the end of the season who plays in both 35 and 36? So I think my top three options. Number one, Alexander-Arnold. Again, all of this depends on that fixture being confirmed. Alexander-Arnold, number one priority, I think, if you don't have him. I would put Luke Shaw second, and I would put Luka Dean at Everton third. Everton have the fixtures. Luka Dean has the attack and potential. So that is my order of preference here. Trent number one, Shaw number two, Luka Dean number three. Question from Mark Robinson. Who are the triple captain options this week, please? So if this Liverpool double game week gets confirmed and they play Southampton and West Brom, Basically, I think if you still have your triple captain chip left, the fixtures will do you a huge favour and they open up the door for Mohamed Salah with two very favourable fixtures. So that's the way I'd be going. 
Um, Southampton West Brom, Mohamed Salah sounds pretty good to me. He's got those penalties. Um, so yeah, I think it's an easy one. I think if you if 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 that does happen, the other options I think Bruno would be a fine option as well this week, and Ian Acho, you know, he just delivers week in week out, whether it's goals or assists. So I think he's a pretty good triple captaincy option this week. But I would be leaning towards Mohamed Salah there. Question from Jeff Linkvist: Is Zaha a good option, or should we avoid Crystal Palace? They have some good fixtures. So yeah. The fixtures are tempting for Palace, but I think we need to remember they've been pretty awful for most of the season. Their double game week this week is Sheffield United and Southampton, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, After that, they've got Villa in 36. Then it's Arsenal and Liverpool to finish the season. Zaha is probably the only one that interests me. Uh, And Alex mentioned the goalkeeper, Guaita, as well. Those are probably the two that you're looking at if if you fancy going for a Crystal Palace player this week. Now, there is a potential groin issue, I think, for Zaha. I read a few comments on Twitter this morning from Mr. Dennery. I think there was a few quotes from Hodgson to say Zaha had was complaining about an issue before the game, but he went through and played with it. Uh, but Hodgson's not convinced that he's 100% fit. So that's just something to keep an eye on. If you're thinking about buying Zaha this week, you probably should wait until after the press conference from Hodgson on Friday just to see if he gives an update on him to see if there's still a lingering issue there. And if there is, you know, there's there's that possibility that maybe he misses one or two games. So for me, I think Crystal Palace will be an avoid if I replace Mendy in game week 36. I don't think it will be for Guetta. So yeah, I just... Don't have much time for Crystal Palace this season. Question from Shaitanya Jalan. Two questions in one here. Uh, first one is, should we sell Lingard? Well, should those who own him sell Lingard? And my answer to this is absolutely not. Because, yes, he's blanked in the last two games. But he's been bloody amazing for you if you've owned him for the last month or two. West Ham still have the fixtures. They've still got something to play for. If any player deserves more time, it's Jesse Lingard. I wouldn't be selling, so absolutely not. I would keep him. Yes, there's of course, there's a temptation to sell him this week for a player who's got two fixtures, but I wouldn't be doing it. I would keep Jesse Lingard. I still think there's points in him for the next couple of game weeks. Second question from, from Shaitanya. Who are the best 5 million defenders for the last four game weeks? So I don't think there's too many amazing options at 5 million or less I think Everton's the obvious place to go because they've got the best fixtures they've got a double and they don't have a blank so Mason Holgate or Seamus Coleman are both around a similar price, I think those two are good options, they're in my thoughts this week Uh, Soufal who I sold on the wild card I still think is a good option yes he doesn't have a double game week I think that's 6 assists for the season now or could even be more, he got the assist for one of Antonio's goals I still think he's a good option. Again, good to target players who've got something to play for at this stage of the season. And Soufal and West Ham certainly do. And another one just popped into my mind when I was you know, reading through this question. I had to go check his price. Lindelof at Manchester United. I'm thinking about buying Harry Maguire this week. Uh, Lindelof gets 90 minutes most of the time. He does always seem to be carrying some sort of injury. But I think he's played most games recently. Uh, so I think Lindelof is one to consider as well at 4.8 million if you can't quite afford Harry Maguire or Luke Shaw. Looking at the captaincy candidates for Game Week 35, I think it's got to be a double Game Week player. So I think the standouts are Mohamed Salah, who I mentioned, if that double Game Week gets confirmed for Liverpool. Bruno Fernandes, always a captaincy option, especially when he's got two fixtures and that performance by him in Europa League would give me a lot more confidence in doing so. Ian Acho, very good captaincy option this week as well with the two fixtures and Trent Alexander-Arnold has to be in the conversation for captaincy as well if Liverpool play Southampton and West Brom. Differentials, if you want to do something different, Ollie Watkins and Calvert-Lewin, just been very, very good seasons for those two guys. Both, um, both have double game weeks. Uh, I had Zaha on this list as well, but I think when a player, if there's a player who has a potential injury, it probably makes sense not to risk it with the captaincy. So I'm probably going to stroke him off this list. So yeah, Watkins or Calvert Lewin, but I I really wouldn't look past you know even if you're even if you're way down the rankings or if you're way down your mini league, I still wouldn't look past the likes of Salah, Bruno, Ianacho or Trent this week for the armband. What transfers am I thinking about for Game Week 35? Bamford is going for sure. I've absolutely had enough there. So the candidates, 
I don't have any cash in the bank, so I'm probably looking at Watkins, Antonio or Chris Woods. Uh, probably leaning towards Watkins at the moment for the double game week, but I'm going to give Antonio a lot of consideration. I think Antonio is capable of outscoring Watkins, even though he's got one less fixture. But then again, I sold Watkins on my Game Week 30 wildcard and he's returned every single Game Week since I sold him. Just very consistent, so maybe I'll go back there. Um, Calvert-Lewin, I would like to be able to get him in, but cash is a problem there. So I need to take a minus four and maybe lose Alonso, which, which I may end up doing anyway. So Alonso, I think, will go as well. So I'm pretty sure I'll be taking a minus four this week. I'll get rid of Alonso and I'll replace him with someone who has a double Game Week who will play both games. That's why I'm looking at Harry Maguire as a safe pick. But I may look at Holgate or Seamus Coleman as well. I can't afford Luka Dean. If I could, he would be the Everton defender I would go for. So that's what I'm thinking. Bamford for probably Watkins or Antonio. Uh, and Alonso out for either Maguire or Holgate or Coleman. Or maybe I'll, I could end up going Lindelof there as well for cash reasons. I'm going to wait for news on that Manchester United Liverpool fixture before giving transfers too much thought I'll I'll see what happens in the European games this week as well thanks as always for taking the time out of your week to listen I really do appreciate it please give it a share on Twitter if you enjoyed it and leave a review on whatever platform you're using to listen if you'd like to support me as a full-time fantasy manager and hear two more podcasts before Friday's deadline check out patreon.com forward slash FPL general best of luck to you all in game week 35 hopefully it's a big scoring double game week hopefully I get more than 20 points this time enjoy the Champions League and I'll talk to you again next Tuesday The Athletic